Seatbelts can prevent severe life-altering injuries or even death, should you be involved in a car crash. But what really happens during a crash? Let's take a look. There are three stages of a crash. The vehicle crash, the human crash, and the internal crash. But what actually happens in each of these three stages? Stage one of the crash is the vehicle crash. Let's say a car was traveling at 50 miles per hour when it hits a tree. How fast is the car traveling now? Zero miles per hour. The vehicle has gone from 50 to zero miles per hour. This is a vehicle crash. Pretty simple, right? Stage two is the human crash. You are sitting in a vehicle that is traveling at 50 miles per hour. When your car hits the tree, how fast are you going? You are still traveling at 50 miles per hour until something stops you. Just because the car stopped doesn't mean you stopped. Ideally, the seatbelt would have stopped you. But what if you weren't wearing your seatbelt? What's going to stop you? Let's watch this slow motion clip of a car crash. This car is only traveling at 30 miles per hour when it hits the barrier. Look what happens when the mannequin is wearing a seatbelt. But what happens when he is not wearing a seatbelt? It might be fun to watch this controlled test as the mannequin smashes into the windshield. But if this were a real crash and you were sitting where the mannequin is, well, that wouldn't be funny. Sometimes, people believe that if they are in a car crash, they could hold themselves in their seat to protect themselves from injury. To understand why no human is strong enough to accomplish this, let's talk about the crash force energy produced during an actual crash. Newton's law says that force equals mass times acceleration. To apply this to a car crash, let's say that crash force equals weight times speed. A simple example of how to figure the crash force energy would be if I weigh 10 pounds and I crash at 10 miles per hour, we simply take my weight, 10 pounds, times the speed, 10 miles per hour, and we get 100 pounds of crash force. Realistically, let's say that you weigh 100 pounds and you are going 50 miles per hour. Your crash force is 100 times 50 and equals 5,000 pounds of force. If you are not wearing a seatbelt, what will stop you? The windshield? The steering wheel? Dashboard? Your body will keep going until something stops you. The tree, the pavement, something will eventually stop you. This is the human crash. Next, you will experience the third stage of the crash, or the internal crash. The exact same thing that just happened to your body is also going on inside your body. Your internal organs, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver, and your brain are all traveling at what speed? Right, still traveling at 50 miles per hour. Even when your car and body have stopped, your internal organs can crash into each other from the impact. Though damage to any internal organ can be life-threatening, let's look specifically at what can happen to the brain. If you aren't wearing your seatbelt, your head could slam into the steering wheel or windshield. When your head hits, the impact launches the brain backwards inside the skull and may even bounce forward as well. Remember that the brain is floating in liquid and is only slightly firmer than cream cheese. Think about what would happen if you had some cream cheese floating in a cup of liquid and slammed it into something. What happens to the cream cheese? It sloshes back and forth, doesn't it? Just like the brain during a crash. To get a better idea, let's use another scenario. Have you ever been using a hammer and accidentally hit your thumb? What happens to your thumb? It immediately begins to swell up, doesn't it? Let's compare that to the brain getting slammed around inside the skull. What do you think happens to your brain after getting slammed around? Right, it begins to swell, just like your thumb did when it was injured. But unlike your thumb, there is no place for the swelling to go. Your skull stays solid, making no place for the swelling pressure to go. As the swelling takes place, it starts squeezing down and can turn off the blood flow to parts of the brain. Without blood flow, it takes only minutes before that part of the brain starts to die. Depending on where the swelling is, a person can lose their ability to walk, taste, smell, or even access their memories. Once that part of the brain is damaged, it can't be fixed. It's gone forever. Let's look at another example of crash force. 
These video clips show the difference of the crash force of cars going 40, 50, and 56 miles per hour. Even with such a small difference of speed, watch the difference in the amount of damage done to each car as they hit the wall. Now let's look at what is going on inside the vehicle at these three different crash speeds. The car going 50 miles per hour generates 56% more kinetic energy in the crash, while the car going 56 miles per hour generates 95% more kinetic energy than the car going only 40 miles per hour. Watch the difference the higher speeds and increased kinetic energy make as the mannequin slams forward into these airbags in each of these crashes. All things being equal, at the higher crash speeds, the increased kinetic energy increases the likelihood of injury to the face, neck, and brain. Just like we learned when we applied the crash force formula earlier. So, Let's review what we learned today about the three stages of a crash. Stage one is the vehicle crash, or when the vehicle comes to a stop. Stage two is the human crash, or when the person in the car comes to a stop. And stage three is the internal crash, or when the internal organs of a person in the crash come to a stop. My question to you is, what can you do to survive a crash like this? You can greatly increase your chances of survival and decrease your chances of severe injury to you and to others when you wear your seatbelt.